so welcome back to a very special episode. I'm joined by Corey, half of My Life in Gaming, a great channel on YouTube. Highly recommend subscribing down below. You gotta check them out. They have a really technical, way more technical than my show, uh, view on how to get the best picture out of certain games. And they also just review entire series and just get into a technical aspect, the likes of which you've never seen before on YouTube. And one of the best channels out there. And Corey, I'm so happy to have you here today. Thanks for having me. For sure. And the thing that we want to do here is talk about Fantasy Star. Usually every New Year's I talk about E's. I do a New Year's E special. But I want to shake it up this year and talk about Fantasy Star because I first met Corey down at Philadelphia at the Too Many Games convention. And you were there with Try. I get to meet you guys for the first time. And we kind of hit it off. We're all sitting at a table. I started talking to Game Dave about yep. Sui Coden. And so we kind of hit it off. And then you looked at my phone. I don't know if you remember this. You looked at my <laughs> phone and my here's my the back of my phone. And you're like, oh my God, you are a big Fantasy Star fan. <laughs> and at that point, I realized how big a Fantasy Star fan you are. And today we're just going to talk about all of our memories of getting into this series. And we're going to go through the first four games, especially. That's mm -hmm. where... We really kind of, you know, cut our bread and butter playing these games uh, and discovering right. this series. Corey, I'm putting it all to you now. <laughs> Let's go back to the year and how old you were when you played first discovered Fantasy Star. How did you discover it? Uh, I got Fantasy Star on my 11th birthday. Uh, my birthday is the day after Christmas, um, so it's kind of funny, you know, when people are watching this. I will have just celebrated my 40th birthday, uh, but. You know, I I usually got money for uh, for my birthday because you know it's so close to Christmas, and I had seen a couple of ads of Fantasy Star in a friend's magazine because this was kind of before uh, you know like a lot of magazines were on on newsstands, uh, and I'd seen you know one specific ad, and it, they always use the the old uh, the sandworm shot. One of the best and shots was, of the game, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I we we had a, I had a birthday party, and we all went to see a movie. And I stopped in KB Toys beforehand, and I saw it hanging there. And I used all my birthday money to buy it. I, and then it was a very expensive you know, game to buy at the time, wasn't it? It took all the money that I had, and then then we went and saw the Naked Gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great segue into that, right? We get fans <laughs> start see Naked Gun with uh, was it Leslie Nielsen back then, which was a great movie. Yep. Uh, so what did you, did you, you went to the movie, did you come home and play it? Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, I got home, you know, my, my older brother and I uh, put it in and uh, played it for the first time and didn't understand it at all. <laughs> it was, did you, okay, so here's the question, did you play Dungeons and Dragons back then? I did not. Oh, I so did it not. must have been really uh, hard to play. My brother kind of did, but I was not familiar. I mean, I was familiar, but I, it was more the the older group. You know, my brother is four years older, and he played with a lot of the neighbors and stuff, but I was still kind of young, I think, for the time to really wrap my head around it. And so, yeah, exactly. And I'm a few years older than you, during, like, probably near your brother's age, and we were all playing uh, RPGs at the time, like Dungeons and & Dragons mm -hmm. and things like that. Anything we could play like that, tabletop games, anything. And then what happened is some uh, my neighbors down the road, they went off for the summer down to the States, down to Bellingham, and they came back. And I knocked on their door, and I'm like, hey, guys, you're back. And they're like, yeah. And they were being so weird with me. It's like, I said, oh, do you guys want to hang out for the day? And, they're, and I was with my friend Andrew, and they're like, oh, no, we're just going to hang out down in the basement and all that. And then I can hear people in the basement, and I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, should we tell them? And then they're like, because they were keeping it a big secret that they'd gotten Fantasy Star uh, and a Master System and all the RPGs, E's and all that stuff. And every nerdy kid in the neighborhood was in the basement, except for me and my friend Andrew, and we were damn jealous, so we demanded to come in. We went down to the basement, and we saw this thing playing, and it was like, oh my god, and it wasn't just the visuals and the music and all that, it was the idea that you could play a role-playing game without other people. And it's right. not, it's novel, it was a novelty at the time. Now there's billions of RPGs, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that time, there was nothing like that. So how did you work around not understanding how to play it to, you know, falling in love with it, and what made it, you know, but what made you fall in love with it? Well, I mean, I played it. You know, we tried to figure out what to do. Early on in the game, you know, you're just you just get killed so easily, and uh, you know, 
we played it for that night. We couldn't make it anywhere and turned it off and I didn't play it for probably two months. Wow. And then one day I came back to it and early on in the game, there's kind of, I think, something kind of obscure, but it makes sense when you look at it now, where you have to go to a shop in the second town and buy something called Secrets. Right. And then you get the road pass. And then that, that from that point, I was hooked. Like I didn't, I didn't understand that there would be like, you'd go to different planets and stuff like that. Uh, Cause I mean, there was, there's no internet, you know, I didn't, there was like not a lot of magazines to read about this. So everything was completely fresh. And uh, at that point, it was completely, like I was completely addicted to it. And my brother was, you know, we were kind of solving all the puzzles and everything, you know, calling like telling our mom that we're six so we could stay home from school to play it. Make, make, and, probably uh, making maps it, back then, right? Since the game you could save anywhere, you would uh, just walk around and we'd eventually just like save every few steps so we could get out of the, the dungeons because they were pretty complex, you know? And uh, right. so I also showed my friends then and then we, then uh, they, got it as well so we were kind of solving it all together like solving all the you know oh I found this thing at this place and you know it was it was very much a ex experience that cannot be replaced and that's something you really experience much these days I know where you just get together and it's you trade information with your friends you know at, at school and stuff like that I think it was a very special time because it was the birth realistically of the JRPG in America and you know and in Europe, and nobody had experienced anything like that, and there was no internet. And right. the internet is a wonderful, wonderful thing. But it was nice. I'm so happy that we got to experience it like that. It was a oh, true, yeah. yeah, because it was a true mystery. You didn't know what was going on. You didn't know where you were going or what was happening. And you're like, should, should I go there? Should I, I? I don't know what to do. And you'd be stuck. Sometimes you'd be stuck in a puzzle for a month. Uh, it could be that <laughs> yeah. way until a friend helped you solve it, as you said, or you worked it out with you know somebody else. And there was a true sense of exploration and discovery that you don't quite get nowadays. You can just look at a, uh, a playthrough or a walkthrough now. Just go right. to YouTube and there somebody played the entire game. In fact, mm -hmm. e even like on the SNK collection, those old games, you hit a button, it'll play itself. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, what Corey, what times we live in, it's insane. It's, it's, it's nice for recording footage, I have to say. <laughs> It is, isn't it? Like, I want to get to the end boss to, to show in there, and boom. The game will play itself to get there, which is great. You can even fast forward together. But uh, so what was it like um, Like after that? You're like, did you just finish the game? What was it like the ending of the game like for well, you and all that? A big part of it also was um, for things that we couldn't figure out. Um, back back then, Sega had a 1-800 number where you could call up like their hint line. Oh. And if you called them, they would send this packet of like maps and all this other stuff. What? And I sadly don't have any of this stuff anymore. You... And uh, yeah, I mean, we would call these game counselors and just talk to them about the game for hours. And uh, was it like, know, that's like I, a one eight hundred number. That must have cost a lot of money back then. Yeah, it was. It was one eight hundred USA Sega. Oh my was god, the, was the number. So, so wait a second here. <laughs> this is interesting. This is where we're getting to the meat and potatoes of this. So you're telling me. That you they you would write to them and they would send you maps and stuff. Well, no, you'd call them and they're like, "Oh, can we have your address?" It's funny oh, because wow. I would go on to, like, talk to a lot of these people and I have like handwritten like letters and stuff from them. They even would send me stuff like this. Like I have these old folders. Oh, like they would send me. I mean, they're a little in kind of rough shape, but you know, like Sega for the '90s, the new generation, <laughs> nice. just like stuff like that. They would send. That, I bet, <laughs> do you know, to have some of those maps and stuff from back then, that's like a true collector's item for Fantasy Star oh, yeah. fans. I'd love to have something like that. That is crazy. I'm sure that people exists. out there have them because they they were not shy about sending it out. I mean, I think I got two or three of them wow. at, when I was a kid, but I don't have, have any of them anymore. That's really too bad. And all yeah. that. So we got, we got to talk about something. Um, the music. Okay, this is kind of interesting. I want I, cause I don't know. What did you... Because you obviously you played it in the future uh, with the FM sound, which is the the true way the Japanese played it. Okay, what do you think of the FM sound? Um, I have to admit that I am not a big fan of FM sound on most Master System games. Um, big fan of the PSG sound, but 
there's something about the FM sound. It just it sounds too too smooth. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I didn't I didn't play it with uh, any FM sound until probably only like a handful of years later when I got my master system modded for an FM sound module. I, I, I'm with you. I don't like the FM sound either, and I feel so bad. Like, 10 years ago when I reviewed Fantasy Star, my very first video I ever did on the channel, I don't know why, you know, because it's my first time in front of the camera. I I said something like, oh, I like the FM sound. I don't know why I said that, because I, I've watched the video so many times since, and I'm like, I hate the FM sound. Why did I say yeah. I liked it? It's like, it well, was one of those things I remember. Know, it was, like, it, it was not something I knew existed for a long time, and you think, oh, you know, it's got to be better. <laughs> of course. And maybe, hey, and, here's the thing. If we played it the original, with the original FM sound, maybe we would have liked it. But because we've heard it not with that, that's the only right. way I can hear Fancy Star's music now. Like, the first one. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. You know, even the, you know, the title screen music, like, the notes sound all off to me. Yeah. You know, I just, I just can't do it. I have no real interest in playing it all the way through in that way. Yeah, and, and just, just as, as, a, as a side note, so uh, here's the uh, the original Fantasy Star right here, and they also released a Mega Drive version. I'm sure I brought it out. Here we go. Here's uh, Fantasy Star 1 on the Mega Drive, mm -hmm. which you can play with the FM sound on the Mega Drive in Japanese. <laughs> so there's, there's that way. And what's another way we could play Fantasy Star? Was the Game Boy game. We all remember the oh, Game yep. Boy game, yes. Digital Eclipse did that. They're, uh... They were it still was, around uh, all the way back then. They've been around for a long time. Oh yeah, I mean they've been. They were like one of the first pioneers of, of emulation. Yeah, I thought they did a pretty good job for the Game Boy game. I thought it was fine at the time. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean they had to reprogram some of the stuff to, to make it so like the text box sizes so it would fear, uh, appear correctly on the uh, on the screen. Right. On the the wider screen. Um, but I, I think that that version has. There is a bug in Fantasy Star One that will delete your save. Isn't it something to do with a save or something? I, I remember. I remember that. I remember freaking yeah, out I, about. I don't it. remember exactly what it was, but it's it's definitely something they they couldn't be fixed back then. Obviously, <laughs> horrible, absolutely horrible. Yeah. So, should we move on to Fantasy Star Two? Is there anything more you want to say about Fantasy Star One that? Um, I mean, I, I have a video that I did a long time ago where I talk about how Fantasy Star was probably the most important game that I ever played. Um, I mean, I grew up going to arcades. You know, it was it was Sega Space Harrier that like made me really fall in love with games. Uh, but it was Fantasy Star that made me realize that you know just something you don't have to just like shoot things in every single game. Like, there's so much more to it and these characters and these stories, you know? It's funny because at that point, uh, I mean, I've never been a huge reader, but RPGs became my books in a lot of ways. Even though, you know, you look back at some of those translations and, you know, they're, they're not the greatest, but I think that... Well, it, we, we, we would, it, 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 it made me more appreciative of... of uh, you know the translations that are around now as well but like able to deal with bad translations now right we were talking about it maybe about a week ago that mm -hmm. you know people complain about translations now and they get really mad about it and we were laughing about it because we we're like back in the day we were just happy to get anything translated we didn't complain yep. we were just like thank god we have this japanese game over here and yeah the translation's a little bit off at times but we just accepted it and i think that's a fact of the 80s and 90s we just thought yeah. we we're just glad to get things you know, pretty much, and all that. But I, I'm with you. Fantasy Star is such an important game, and people have heard me talk about it for so many years. I've gone on and on about it, but it was groundbreaking. And I, I don't believe it's the very first JRPG that was brought over. I believe that was Miracle Warriors came out first. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, Fantasy Star made me go check out the other, you know, made me check out uh, Miracle War Warriors, which I don't think is good at all. Like, I did not like it. Oh, wow. Um, but also... You know, it's like how I discovered uh, Ease, you know, playing that afterwards. And it's a different kind of game, but, you know, you get that, that sense of ad epic adventure that you would, you know, didn't see, didn't see in a lot of other stuff. Big time. As I say, those guys who came, uh, went, went to Bellingham, my friends, they got Fantasy Star, they got Ease, they got King's Quest and Miracle Warriors. And let me say, they had them all at the same time. So it wasn't <laughs> like I had to pick one or the other. We saw Fantasy Star, which was amazing. And then we saw 
uh, Miracle Warriors, which was another alternative RPG, which I just liked because I was so into RPGs. Uh, King's mm -hmm. Quest was novelty for me at the time, but Ease right. was like this action RPG, uh, kind of Zelda-style game. And I was like, oh my god, this is so interesting. And I, w I was in love with all of them. And it made me become this crazy guy that I continue to be now. And I blame it <laughs> on that summer. And I think it's the summer of 1988 for me. Yeah. Uh, I think I was like 13 or 14 years old at that time. It's crazy. And I'm 44 turning 45 in about a, a week, couple of weeks' time which is, uh, from the recording of this and all that. So, so you'd finished Fantasy Star. When did you start hearing about Fantasy Star 2? And what was your excitement to that? And did it live up to your excitement? Uh, so Fantasy Star 2 was... I, I saw that in, in magazines as well. And that that came out in my mind. It was there's a lot bigger, like a lot longer of a gap in between games. But it was really only like a little bit over a year. You know, it was it's 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 crazy because they they made Fantasy Star two like the team that made it in like six months or something like wow. that. Like they they cranked it out. And uh, it seemed like do you know it's really wild that you say that. I think it's because we we're younger and time passes oh, yeah. a little bit uh, longer when you're younger. Uh, the wait for Fantasy Star 2 was insane. Yep. And I'm wondering because there wasn't uh, so many RPGs like there's now. There's like like one or two. You know what I mean? <laughs> On console. So you were waiting for that goddamn game forever. And I was just like, when is this coming out? I, I kept reading the same magazine over and over. That's what we did mm -hmm. back then. Uh, you just so remember you could stare at one single screenshot and your mind would just go nuts about like what the game is going to be like. Oh, so much so. <laughs> it's like... I, I really, I know, we're like the old men now going, oh, guys, you don't know what it was like. It was so much more fun back then. We're not saying that, but we're saying this is what we dealt with. And it was cool to look back mm -hmm. on now that that screenshot was everything to us. It was like, oh, my God, look at this. What is this going to be about? And then the day comes out. Where did you go to get it and how was it? My good friend that I played through most of uh, the first one with got it, I want to say, like four or five days before me. And I remember coming home from a, uh, a Cub Scout meeting, and my mom <laughs> had it for me. And, you know, like I went and played it, and I, I know I kind of have a controversial opinion on Fantasy Star 2, and that it is my least favorite in the series. More so than <laughs> 3, and, and we'll get into 3, but you like mm -hmm. 3 more than 2. Uh, I mean, I think that... Like having replayed them fairly recently, like two is definitely a way better game than than uh, three is. But in the moment, there was uh, so much stuff about Fantasy Star Two that was kind of a letdown to me. Mm. Um, and I, a lot of it is my own my own fault because you know you you let your mind go crazy of what it's going to be. You know you saw like the like the battle scenes, you know were su like visually are such a downgrade from the first game. Um, even though, you know, you have more enemies on screen, they're all animated and stuff like that. But, you know, just having that, that grid background was like, I mean, I would see it in, in magazines, think that it was a placeholder. Like there was going to be other oh. stuff in there. Oh, you just and, thought maybe it was like a computer, like background. They were in some computer system and it was like giving right. you that kind of matrixy background, which matrix didn't exist at the time, but some kind of grid system in that regard. Yeah. But really the big thing that ruined it for me is like I had I had such a good experience with my friends and everybody you know playing through the first one it was you know it was, it was an event you know it was something that I'm sure all of us remember and I mean at least I hope we all remember well, I definitely... the old of uh, all the us that do remember yes <laughs> but you know as you know the, the second game came with a with a hint book and you know to like a, a 12 year old yeah I mean I I got mine it's well worn Right here as well. Mine you know? is so well worn, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I when you put something like this in front of a twelve year old, they're gonna read through the entire thing in one sitting and like it it destroyed my the experience. And you know, I, I can I can understand that you know it's it's my fault. You know, but back then I didn't really know better. Oh, so you do, you you just start reading the whole goddamn thing before you play the game. Yeah, I mean, I basically played the intro and then, like, read through the whole thing, like, in bed before going to sleep that <laughs> Well, the reality is the hint book is only takes you to a certain point, which is nice. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, 
as we'll talk about later on, the, the three hint book leaves a ton of stuff out, but this really just takes you up until it shows like shows the second to last boss. Right. What happened is uh, I, I was really wanting this game intensely, and I don't know, it was very different back then. My friend Andrew's dad traveled a lot for work in the States, and he picked up the game in the States and brought it back for him. And I went over there and had to watch him play it. It was torture. I never <laughs> talked about this stuff so much. So I sat on the couch and he's like, yeah, it comes to the hint book. And I remember looking through the hint book and I'm like, whoa. And I just remember flipping through it and putting it down and going, okay, I'm done. I was like, I don't want to see too much more. Yeah, I and, mean, you had the restraint for it. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm envious. Well, remember one thing. I was a couple of years older. And at that time, you know, when 13, 14, 15, 16 years old makes a bit of a difference, right? Uh, yeah. I, it oh, honestly absolutely. did. But I... The thing, I was with you, and I, I, I hold the same thing as you. The backgrounds still drive me nuts to this day. Why couldn't they have put in a couple? I mean, really? They couldn't put in a couple of backgrounds? Like, all they would have right. needed is a, a field, a computer background, you know, for all the damn mazes you're in. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's like four, four or five backgrounds? I think they could have slipped that in. I don't... Yeah. I think I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that it's all because of their their tight development uh, schedule, but I don't know. Another thing that annoyed me. I mean, we're we're talking spoilers here, right? It's not a big deal. Yeah, we're talking spoilers. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they blow up one of the planets, and you know that was kind of a letdown. And you know, the first game had three planets, but this one you only go to two. Mm. You know, it, even though they they kind of made the first planet. They, they made the Motavia, the uh, the desert planet, more like Palma. So it's kind of like a combination of the two of them. But still, I mean, it just... Because of that, the scale felt so much smaller. I, I'm, it's so interesting that you say that, is that Fantasy Star 1 did feel like you were traveling and you were really moving around the universe and you really... You get your own ship and all this other stuff. Yeah, you had your own robot and stuff. It was so cool. Mm -hmm. Where it did seem a lot smaller. And then we, we'll get to 3 in a bit, but... Three seemed smaller, but then we find out it's kind of a bigger scope in a lot of ways. Yes. And then yeah. four kind of, we'll get to that one too. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's funny that you say, I, anyway, I'm not going to go on about those goddamn backgrounds in uh, two anymore, <laughs> but I also, the music I really like into, but it, it's very, very different. It's very, it, it really is doing its own thing with the Genesis sound chip. And yes. uh, there's no, there's a few kind of harkens back, you know, harkening back tunes, but it just, it felt very different than one. It felt like its yes. own thing, and it was like... Just like a lot more technolo technological, you yes. know, bigger cities, um, which is, you know, indicative of the game itself. You know, just like the world that it, it's, it's set in. But, you know, it just, it loses a lot of that that fantasy feel. Totally. Yeah, because what you're referring to, and I know exactly what you mean, is that the first game has, like, manticores, and it has a lot of... Um, like monsters from mythology and right. it also has a lot of weapons from star wars and guns laser guns and all this and it combined those in a really fantastic way that i don't want to sound cheesy here but you're exactly what you said it kind of it is fantasy and mm -hmm. when we got you're right when we get to number two it's so science fictiony that it's it feels very like a different universe almost Right. Yeah. But. And, you know, looking back, I don't think that that's a bad thing. No. But, I, you know, at the time, it just, it didn't, it didn't seem the same to me. And, uh, you know, <laughs> these days people complain if sequels are too similar. Mm. But back then, you know, you wanted really everyone, everything to just kind of be an enhanced version of that original, I guess. Yeah, could you imagine uh, playing as Alice again in number two? That'd be so strange. Uh, see, I think that would be, that would have been awesome. I like, know. I, I, I love uh, RPGs that continue on with the same characters, or at least they have returning characters. Uh, and, you know, when when part two came out, I was like, oh, this is a thousand years after the first one. You know, everyone's long dead, you know. But as we'll kind of talk about later on, like when we get to the fourth one, there's a lot of callbacks to that that make it make that time gap not seem And that's what makes like the big fourth deal. game so classic and incredible. Yes. I mean, they could have done any better. Uh, at all. Right. Um, anything more you want to say about Fantasy Star 2? I, I, I want to say one thing that... I, I'm, we're not ragging on Fantasy Star 2. I like Fantasy Star 2 a lot. But the dungeons were so grueling. Yeah. Oh. yeah I mean, just the game itself was so... 
was so grindy. I didn't realize it at the time, you know, it's just like I was OK just kind of going back and forth on the D-pad and just spending hours because I didn't have anything else to do. Yeah. And, you know, like now it's like I, I cannot play it and I can't play the cartridge version like legit that same way anymore. I'm glad it still has the battery save because I have it right before the, you know, right before the last boss or like maybe right after the last boss where you just have to go. Up. I mean, you know, another thing, like if we're talking spoilers, um, I kind of felt that the the ending was a little bit kind of brought it brought it too much to our own reality. And you have all these these the spaceship that left the planet Earth and is like ended up in this this uh, this other galaxy and. It just it like loses a lot of that fantastical like fantasy esque. Yeah, it's like we're leaving the universe. It was kind of like they just they took Fantasy Star in a totally different direction that continued mm -hmm. on into number three, and it's yeah. like, can we just bring it back to what was the core elements of one, which was all right. what we talked about, and they just kept taking you away from that and trying to expanding things and changing your mindset on it, which was cool. I guess it yeah. is cool, but it's it was just different. I think. I think one of the most important things that we haven't talked about 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 when it comes to part two, also is that, you know, this was a game and it didn't register to me at the same time, but it it is a game that kills off a main character, yes. pretty early in the game, like a character that you have spent a lot of time, you know, building up at that point, even though she gained levels a lot, but. It's a character I, you that know, you as a kid, like I didn't re re recognize the significance of when when Nay dies. It's kind of like when Eris dies in Final Fantasy, mm -hmm. uh, Final Fantasy uh, Seven. It has mm -hmm. that same sort of impact for a Fantasy Star player, and we won't. I, I don't. Yeah, I just don't want to say that if somebody wants to play it. It's just, it's just um, a character dies, and it's just right in the beginning. Everybody knows who's played the game, and it's just like so shocking. You're like, oh my god, like you're doing this? This is happening, and it's, it's kind of like a bit of a heroic death, and it's, it's kind of cool and, and all that. But it, it, it was a shock. You know, to be honest with you, when you think about that game, it's so simple, and there's so much grind, and then that moment happens. And then it's like, oh, yes. stuff, like, really, things are happening in this game. That's kind of how it felt. Right. Yeah. And, you know, that's it's kind of a big turning point in the game as well, because, you know, up until that point, you're a government agent doing all this stuff, and then when that happens, you lose a main character, and then suddenly you're the, you're a fugitive from the law, and, you know, like, all the, all the monster types change from, like, you know, organic creatures to all robots. Security on the stuff, yeah. At that point. And then I really enjoyed the end uh, battle with Mother Brain, and I thought that oh, was pretty cool. The graphics cool. were insane on that, too, the way it would cycle yeah. through the colors and stuff. Does that, and the Dark Force in that game is probably the best that Dark Force looks in any of the games. He's just, he's, he's so massive that, you know, it... It, the first time I played, I was like, "Oh, geez." It, to, to be honest with <laughs> it you, it was kind of scary. When you got to the end b boss battles in Fantasy Star 2, they were so intense and hard and epic that that kind of set a precedent of what all end boss battles should be in an RPG. Yes, because it, yeah. it was such an epic, hard ending. It was tough. It was insane. You, I was scared. I was honestly afraid. Mm -hmm. It's so funny to yeah. think about now, like. <laughs> now you play a game, you're like, oh, you put it down, but then you're it like, was you're... it was really hard too. Yeah, uh, it's such a hard like both the last bosses were insanely difficult. Um, but even like the the ending of the game, you know, it ends on a very ambiguous note that you don't know what happened to the main characters. The ending is great. Mm. Uh, just you know the the shots of all the characters fighting, it's it's great. But you know the, the first one, you know, really had a definitive ending where you know you see the, the sunset you know, and all the, the and then you have the, the last shot of everybody standing there hugging each yeah. other yeah <laughs> but here they just they kind of left it but you don't know if they lived or died right right and then let's go to three where were you okay. when with three was there again was there a bit of a build-up of course looking at video game magazines well, yes hmm? oh yeah i mean i have right here oh this is the it's my original mega play that is like well worn from nice. pouring over these shots. I mean, look at the shot of like from the intro. It's, oh, it's fantastic! It's, it's great. Yeah. But you know, I had learned my lesson with the second one, and the third one did not come with a hymn book, and I knew I was going to go in not knowing really anything about it. Yep, it's it's 
Yeah. It's kind of atrocious box art. <laughs> it's really, it's really a weird box art. It's like, but you, you know what's interesting though? There's such big spoilers right there in the box yes. art. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's something you don't really notice until you, until you play it though. That's what's good um, about it. But for anybody who's looking at that box art, there's a huge spoiler. That's the ending of the game, and you're like, "What?" But we'll get to that. So, uh, wh where were you? Do you remember picking it up? The what was going on? I remember getting it. I don't remember. It, it came out during the summer. Yeah, I remember um, that. So I remember I, I mowed lawns all summer to, to afford games back then, and you know that was I knew what I wanted well ahead of time. So I was, okay, this game's coming, so I'm going to set this money aside, and uh, you know I went into it with with the experience that I had with the second. So I was completely spoiler free. And uh, it's funny because the game kind of veers in the exact other direction as the second one, where the second one was like very technology driven. Then, then this one is extremely fantasy driven. Yeah, it really is. It's, that's a really interesting way to put it. Yeah, we go straight back to that. And maybe it's because it was a, a long time afterwards as well. But I, I, the day I got it, you know, I played through the entire first generation, I think, within two days. And then I think I played through the, the second generation in one day. <laughs> well, you, you have to explain to people what that means. People are like, what ge generations? Yes. That, that was what was new to this game. Yes, it had branching paths. At the end, end of each, we start out with one main character, and at the end of a certain quest, then he gets to choose two people to marry. And depending on who you pick to marry, then it that you have a different child. And then that child will go on and have, complete a quest and then we'll get to ch uh, marry two, choose between two people to marry as well. So you have a total of four different endings. I only... The big sore spot for me is the fact that you have four different endings, but the game only comes with two save slots. <laughs> yeah, we were it. talking about that. I've only played through the game one time. I, I only did one thing and I was like, okay, that's good for me. But is there really a big difference? Um. I mean, I think that one of the last generations is is different in that you have a unique main character sprite. Um, other ones are just kind of palette swaps of, 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 of previous characters, but one of them has like a completely unique uh, character sprite. But other than that, you know, the, the first half of the final generation is different for all characters, but when they hit a certain point, then it's just the same game from that point on. Right. But they all have different endings. Yeah, I, none of them good. I, I was kind of getting that feeling when I was playing it. I'm, I'm thinking way back. I remember for me, you were mowing lawns. I was in summer school <laughs> <laughs> because I was probably I was skipping so much school during the year to play freaking video games that I, was, I had to take some summer school course. I and I remember I was at home and I was so I was, I was at school and I was like, oh my god, hopefully you know I can go and pick the game up today. And I remember grabbing it. And I always, my memories of Fantasy Star 3 are always coming home from goddamn summer school. I'm playing the game. Beautiful sun, mm -hmm. sun outside. I remember it being summer as well and playing it. And and I liked it, but I was like, it felt, this is a really, this is how I'm going to describe it. This is for me playing it one time back then. Very flat of a game. Yes. Yeah, and there is, having replayed it this year to get all the endings... It is a much worse looking game than I remember, a much worse sounding game than I remember, yeah. and uh, there is not a lot of variation throughout this entire thing. And one of the reasons for that is because they had they made it really, really quick, and like two or three people returning from the previous games, because, you know, the first two had, you know, like Reiko Kodama, who was like always credited for the series, and, uh, and Yuji Naka. Yeah. But they were busy working on Sonic at the time. Right. So, so it's it's crazy that they that they had this team go on to do it. I can't remember what this team did before. It was a, uh, I think it was the team that did the Genesis version of Golden Axe. Oh wow! <laughs> so that kind of gives you an idea of where you know they pro their heads were probably when having this more medieval setting, fantasy setting. Oh, it's fast. It's fascinating hearing anything about Fantasy Star Three because. It's one of the ones that I don't know a lot about. Like, I played the game, finished it. You know, I, I, I you know, we'll get to the ending in a it's second, pretty, but... It's a pr pretty forgettable game. It's very forgettable because, as you said, it's the same old, same old. You're just doing the mm -hmm. same stuff. The only thing that was kind of interesting in the game for me that I remember was when Ren would transform into, yes. like, a, a yeah, vehicle. Yeah, because you get, you get those vehicles back that were kind of missing in the second one. I mean, you had the... the, uh, the 
jet scooter. Oh, that's, that's right. That's you it. could go in all the water and stuff like that. I remember mm -hmm. that type of thing. But yeah, like but, you know, it like the only thing is like like Ren and transforming, and that's the only thing that was memorable. Everything else was like blah, like that goddamn dungeon music. Which hey, let me say, I like, but goddamn, they played it over. Over. Yes, yeah, yeah. Over. I, the music is is so different in it, and there's there's some really good tracks on it, but they're the loop on them is so short, right? That you just get that drilled in your head. But one thing I do like hmm. is that the overworld music, it changes depending on how many people you have in your party. Isn't so it like more and more? Isn't it like resubtle changes? Yeah, yeah. It's just like more and more like textures get get added into the music and just like kind of builds up to a very heroic sound when you have a full party. That, and that was also the thing in the battle, uh, you know, when you would get into battle, the music would mm -hmm. change if you were losing, the music would go, go all evil on you, like you're, you're doing terrible and you're gonna die, but if you all of a sudden were kicking ass, the music was kicked off into a really high note and you were the hero, per se. Yeah. That, that was, was kind of neat, actually. I, I did like that. But speaking of the battles, I mean, the battles... They went back to a very Fantasy Star 1 kind of style, where it's, you know, that, that first-person, ground-level view, but you don't see your character. Yeah. And the, the, the enemies, you know, they put a lot of them on screen, but they're animated so poorly. Like, some of, there's, like, this one character is, like, he's giant, and his attack is, like, he moves Yeah, I was about to say that! Look at that! We did that at the same time! I know! Talk <laughs> about being fucking cheap, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'll never... Me and my friends always used to laugh at that. He's got his, exactly you said, a huge guy, and he wiggles his lot. You're like, what the hell is going on here? His <laughs> pinky is like, what's happening here? Uh, yeah, the yeah. enemies were lame. They were so super lame. I mean, their their actual sprites were really nice looking, but yeah. you know, there's, there wasn't a lot of them. There was just no animation. But the backgrounds, you always had like the parallax, like the scrolling clouds and stuff like that. It was it was cool, but. Yeah. It, it didn't build from, the, like, when you think about it, it's so weird. Fantasy Star 1, they got it so right. Even the the, yes. uh, the backgrounds were animated in Fantasy Star 1. And then mm -hmm. number 2 had no backgrounds. And then number 3 had scrolling backgrounds. But I, w I would have liked just hand-drawn, beautiful backgrounds a little bit more. A lot more detail for mm -hmm. things. You know, we got the, that, the... yeah, we end up getting that in 4. But, you know, they finally get it right in 4. But well, let's get to the ending here. What was okay. your take? Because the ending blew my mind in Fantasy Star 3. And all yeah. so, so many people always rag on the game, and they haven't even got to the ending of the game. The ending of the game saves the game. It, it really does, because, you know, you, you spend so much time thinking that this game has nothing to do with previous games. You're right. And then you find out that you're on, you know, the way that they tie it into the second game, that you were on a spaceship that escaped from, the, from Palma when it blew up in Part 2. And you know it's it's such a it's such a cool way to bring it all together. Although, I mean, I haven't done like the math. It kind of messes up oh. the the timeline because you don't know how much time has passed. And um, I think my understanding is is that I mean, I guess when we talk after we finish talking about all the games, we should like try to reconcile the timeline a little bit. That's gonna be <laughs> because I, it's I, something I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about and. It's, it's kind of all over the place. You don't know how much time has passed between, uh, you know, when the battle in the intro that they kind of talk about, like like the, the, the characters, Arakio and Leia, like fighting each other, and then it says a thousand years passes. So you don't know how much time passed from the ship leaving during the time of part two to, uh, you know, it, maybe this is like something I, only I've thought about, but it's like it messes everything up. So you don't know. I hate, if I never, might I never mind take place the, after part four. Yeah, never mind in the game itself. Generations are going by because it is called Generations of Doom, which is an it's, it's such a silly subtitle. I know, I know it is, but but you you're getting married and having kids like you know a couple times over. So that's mm -hmm. like how much, how long is that? Like twenty plus years in between, or thirty years in between. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So I. I it's insane. I, I'm not even going to quantify the timelines in this ridiculous series because I think they were just making this shit up as they went along. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially this team that didn't really, weren't involved in the previous games. They they probably just, it was like a job they had that they knew they had to get this thing together and they had no RPG experience going into it either. Yeah, yeah. You could, you could see that it was kind of a very rudimentary RPG. That's what number three's problem is. But... When I found out that my main characters were living on a spaceship, I was like, mm -hmm. that is the coolest thing ever. And I think I was coming from Megazone 2-3. It's an anime 
where they were living on a spaceship. And I love that concept. And I, I was so cool. I was I thought it was so cool that that was happening here. And it kind of kind of was tying into the lifeboats and stuff that were being sent out. Right. You know. So it was like okay. It, it, it's such a cool idea. Yeah, it kind of it's kind of making sense to me at the time, but mm -hmm. I, I wasn't unhappy that the game was over. I was like okay, and then I, it's not that I, I was I was getting into other games at that point. You know, like you know Final Fantasy and all this stuff. And but then all of a sudden, the announcement of a of a certain game here and, geez, wow, I just almost fell out. This kind of bugs me. I, I just felt the difference here. We went from plastic to cardboard casings uh, for the amazing don't even get me number. Started. Yeah. Like like the, the the cardboard cases are such a sore spot with me in general, but the fact that Fantasy Star 4 of all games has a cardboard case is I hate that. I know that, that Joe from GameStack has taken his and like cut it up so he could put it inside of a, <laughs> a clamshell. That is a great Which is something idea. I, I do, but I can't bring myself to, to cut no, up the original box. I, guess. I can't cut the. Well, you know what you could do? I guess you could print it out. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's what it is. Like the, it is. The, the time for it to be fragile is like it's not going to get messed up now. I think. Yeah. <laughs> we had. We had to have, but there was. Where, where were you when you got Fancy Star Four? And, and we, we got to get uh, into this. So I feel like I think I might have been in eleventh in grade. Um, cause there was a big gap between three and four yeah. and during that, during that gap, you know, we, I was introduced to Final Fantasy, you know, Final Fantasy two or four. Um, and even more specifically that had made a bigger impression than even Final Fantasy two was uh, Lunar, the Silver Star. Oh, huge game at the time. Yes. And, you know, we were finally starting to get these. Well, starting with Lunar, like we started getting these RPGs that you know started to have more characterization. You know, you started to get the characters would talk to each other. Yes. And you know when Fantasy Star Four came out, you know it was I remember it being so expensive, but I had my money saved set aside. I think it came out in February. It was. It might have been. Oh, jeez. I, I might have been in tenth grade. I'm not. I, I haven't completely. Don't quit completely remember, but I remember coming home from a high school basketball game. And uh, my friend Chris was with me, and he, I, I don't know why I remember this, but he had a, a Whopper from Bur Burger King for the first time in his life that night. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. You ever feel like, I mean, look, my mom used to always tell me that, you know, if you always, if you just remembered stuff in school, that you remember, like, about video games, you know, you would have done so much better. <laughs> But look at me now. Well, you, you know, isn't it though? That's what's interesting. I remember my my dad always used to say to me, "Yeah, I'd be playing a video game in the basement, and he'd say, you know, get your head out of fantasy fantasy land.' And mm -hmm. I had to, he wasn't making a reference to Final Fantasy or <laughs> Fantasy Star. He was just he's just like thought video games is a waste of time. And I think yeah. everybody did back then. And go figure. All these years later, that we're doing like retrospective series on it, and like yeah. really making a. I don't know. I, I I'd like to think a contribution to the things that we love, uh, and you know, just by remembering them. I mean, who else? Can, who else is making videos talking about Fantasy Star and getting into like <laughs> look look at us talking Not about the lifeboats people, and sure. all of that in three? I mean, who else does that? Nobody. I don't. I, I can't think of anybody else, honestly. No, no, not at all. Um, so he had the Whopper that night. Did he enjoy the Whopper? As, as I think he did. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't remember his, his reaction to it, but I remember I just remember him having it for the first time that night. That's funny. Uh, but, you know, my mom had gotten picked up the game for me when I was at this basketball game. She had gone to the mall in KB Toys and bought it. And uh, <clears throat> this was kind of my first RPG since, since Lunar. So immediately it's apparent to me that there is so much more dialogue in this game. And it is... You know, I, I, I was in heaven because there's oh. immediately so many references. I mean, I, I I love references to previous games. And, you know, the previous games, like, didn't have many references. But this one is just so many references, like, right off the bat. I mean, you got statues of, you know, you know the, the doctor of learning who is, like, the guy who, uh, like, built your ship yes. and stuff in the, in the first game. And you, all, like, you, got, you got sandworms back again. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many homages, and that's why this game is so incredible that it wraps up the entire series in this beautiful blanket and pays all the perfect homages of everything that was great to the original. We finally get backgrounds 
for the battles, we have beautiful backgrounds and beautiful animations of the characters there, uh, which is harkening back to two. So we got a perfect combination of one and two, I believe there. Right. And uh, the music is excellent. The story is excellent. It's grindy, but there's so much more to do. And it feels like you're a, kind of a lived in world and you enjoy being in the world. You enjoy doing the grinding. The storyline is ab epic. Yeah, it, it has vehicles. I mean, yeah, it, it takes they, they knew that it was going to be their last one. So they just like put everything that they had into it. And that's one thing. I mean, I mean, I guess probably we could talk about this a little bit later, but I I think that there's people say, oh, I hope that they eventually make a Fantasy Star 5. Mm -hmm. But I, I hope not because they they put everything into it and it would cheapen like the way that the story ends in four if they made another sequel. Well, you know what they could do though is just do five and just a thousand years later. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean you 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 destroy the profound darkness. I know. Like it's like I know. The the main thing that was behind uh, everything all along and you know I like, Yeah. Yeah, it, it was and it was great to see the original planets back and just the traversing mm -hmm. of the planets and it, it felt epic. And in fact, it felt like really intensely epic. Like this game was heavy. Yes. You no, know, it's and all of that. I I loved it. And do you know how I got mine is that I don't know why I didn't freaking buy a copy. It was late in the Genesis life when this came out. It really Yeah, oh very, very late, yeah. Very late. And I was on to other systems I mean, and other things and other stuff. My friend Andrew got it, and he finished the game, and he mailed it to me and said, oh, just mail it back to me when you're done. That's what you did back when you were a kid. You know, that's what oh, I mean, that's... <laughs> I, I would never, like, mail my stuff like that. I, I had somebody who had moved away but was back in town visiting. Yeah. And said, oh, can I can I borrow Fantasy Star 3 and then take it back to New Hampshire with me? <laughs> and... Uh, I was like, no, 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 I, I'm not going to, like, I don't mind lending to somebody I see all the time. Yeah. But I'm not going to trust you. And the thing is, is, like, that was the last time I ever heard from that person. Well, yeah, I, I, do you know what I understand? That me and my friend Andrew had a deep trust still to this day. I've known him for, like, 30-plus years. Uh, so <laughs> he, he knew I was good for it, and we, we talked on the phone all the time and stuff like that. But uh, I remember, you know, like, he was my partner in crime with Fantasy Star, and we, we felt the same way as you did. Uh, with all of them, and the fourth one was just like, whoa. And that's why, that's why this one has a stupid sticker on it right here. Uh, right here, <laughs> which sucks, because I bought it for like a blockbuster video used. God. Oh, that's fine, though. I mean, it's like, it's yours. It yeah. is, but I should have gone at day one. I mean, I, the game was so <laughs> goddamn incredible. I hate, I just yeah. love how but it I says. Mean, it was, <laughs> at the time, you know. Yeah. 90, 90 bucks is a lot of money for well, a kid that had no money. Our age, you know. Yeah, yeah for a kid who had Even no now money. It is. But back then, it was like it's like like two hundred dollars. Now it felt like that. It really yeah. did. Uh, my my parents were not. They were great people, but they weren't willing to get me every single game. Uh, yeah. And I can understand I mean, that's, that. That's why I would mow the mow lawns and set it set aside the money, you know, and just because I knew like that far out. And back then, you know, that was kind of when EB. Electronics Boutique uh, would start do would start doing pre-orders for stuff. Yeah, and you know it's what a game. It's like the ending is is amazing. The uh, just like the build up and there is one part I had a save file where you where the main character Chaz goes inside this cavern mm. and he grabs the sword. That's you know that sword has been passed down, you know from the first and second from the first and second game. And he like sees the spirits of all the characters from the previous games that came before. Oh, still gives me goosebumps thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, there's when still, that happened. There's a return of some old characters from the very first game. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. it's epic. It's it's if you're a fantasy star fan, it was everything you could have ever wanted. And hey, yes. I, I hear you. It is the perfect ending, but I've always been angry there's never been a five. I, I really have always wanted a five because <laughs> I want more. And what pisses me off is all my friends get everything that they desire with video game sequels. Like, Rob keeps getting goddamn Mega Man sequels to the end of time <laughs> and all of this. Uh, and, fi you know, Final Fantasy is just rocking forever. But that's why we want to come in and talk about it, because Fantasy Star is such a forgotten series. Yes, it went online after that. Now it lives in an, yeah. an entire different space, which I'm, yes. I'm not saying that I, I don't like it. It's just a different space uh, from the original games. And I just... I can't believe Sega has never said, hey, maybe we should kind of go back and maybe revisit this. 
Ne yeah, I mean, I would. I'd be a little nervous now to see if they could if they could pull it off. Yeah, but you know, a lot of those people who went to uh, who worked on that would go on to make Skies of Arcadia, mm -hmm. which was you know an incredible game. This also like has never had a sequel. <laughs> Yeah, and th that, that's what sold me on Skies of Arcadia was it was the, all the original team. I was like, oh my god, I'm in heaven. Like, yes, I've got to get this game. And I started playing yeah. the game and it's so grindy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been a long time, but I mean, that's like, the three RPGs that had like such a profound effect on me was the first Fantasy Star, yeah. uh, the first Lunar, yes. the Sega CD, and Skies of Arcadia. Like, those are those are my top three RPGs. Oh, yeah, there's, there's just been so many. I, uh, I, I The first Fantasy Star just, just did such a number on me. It yeah. was just so groundbreaking and so it just changed. It was kind of, we also have to say that, you know, just to see the anime art. Um, mm -hmm. I, were you, did you even know about anime when the first um, uh, Fantasy Star came out? Uh, not really. I mean, maybe I'd seen um, like Robotech on TV. Right. But I wasn't, under, I didn't understand that it was a style, know, like a whole different art style, you know, from a different different country. I I had just gotten into it. I, I'd seen mm -hmm. Robotech, as you had, in like 85, and when Fancy Star came out in 88, I really was a big anime fan. I was really collecting books and kind of getting into it. And so, mm -hmm. for me to get a Dungeons and Dragons game, coupled with an anime manga style in one, it was like the greatest thing I could have ever imagined. I had small t I still do. It's all these yeah. years later, 30 years later, and I, that, that summer when I played it was so magical and insane and incredible and everything. I could have, it was the best summer ever. And mm -hmm. it's never, you know, <laughs> and I played all the rest of the games and I liked them. Four is excellent, but they never came close to that religious experience with the first game. It was like, exactly. my God. Was, because you didn't know what you were in for. Yeah. You, know, you had no idea just how much that experience was gonna mean. and how you know it would like it helped shape who i became and in, in terms of like what games i i liked from that that point on yeah for sure it kind of made you an rpg fan for life kind of thing oh yeah 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 and it's just i mean yeah. i might not have as much time for them as, as i'd like to these days but you know <laughs> i still I, put I in love the rpgs that it's kind of like let's go on an adventure and that's yeah what it kind of feels like you know it's it's the first one's kind of a revenge tale what i think is kind of interesting about the first one as well Mm. Is that it was? It's like the kind of the first game that I can remember where the main character was a woman. Yeah, and you know, like now I'm not getting into a whole political thing at all, but nowadays mm. everybody makes such a big deal about that. But we were young guys, and we had a female uh, lead uh, character. We didn't even think about. It. We didn't even care. This is back. Right, in, this exactly. Is back in the day when there was aliens, when Ripley was, you know, mm. the main character. We we just we just oh, it's like okay, it's a female character, it's a male character. We didn't care. It wasn't a thing right. to discuss. We just went with it and loved it. It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And what's kind of interesting too is because you know the uh, when this the, apparently I was looking at release dates and you know like Wikipedia is not very good no, especially it isn't. for like these older games. Yeah. But I mean, it came out like according to according to Wikipedia, it came out. Fantasy Star came out on the uh, Sega Mark III a week after Final Fantasy came out on the Family. Right, but uh, but that was a year after the first Dragon Quest came out. Right, and and I think we got even Dragon Warrior after Fantasy Star here. I mean, like right. people got to figure out that timeline. I, I have figured it out. So um, for us, we got Miracle Warriors, then Fantasy Star, and then you know, and all these other RPGs in the Master System. And the NES was late catching up with RPGs. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was. All my friends had Master Systems. Uh, and we were we were big Sega fans, so yeah. you know the the reason Fancy Star looks so I mean Fancy Star looks so good, so it was always like a weapon as well, you know, to use in like the console wars. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's it, it's such a good looking game, and apparently it is one of the best selling games on the system, which I didn't realize would be the case. I do you know I can understand that because they were trying to compete with Dragon Quest in Japan, mm -hmm. so they're like, yeah, we need to. That's, they even said that in all the interviews that they were trying to build a game. That could compete and be on the same level, and they surpassed it. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, they... it's it's amazing to me that compared to Dragon Quest and even Final Fantasy One, just like how much bigger Fantasy Star One is compared to both of those. Oh yeah, with all the just, anima I mean, with all the animation and I mean, the, the, just the just like the quest length and you go to, you go to three different like going to three different planets like is such a you know 
It's like it's three different overworlds. It's 1988. That's what's insane yeah, about that. Exactly. That's what was crazy. And we have to mention this. And I'm uh, so some other things came out in Japan. Some things that I thought were going to be incredible, and I think you have a different opinion than me, were some remakes, some Sega Ages remakes, and they they came out with Fantasy Star One the remake and Fantasy Star Two the remake. And I'm going to say this: I don't like them at all. I thought yeah, they were I, cheap, not not even a cash in, because I don't think there was a huge audience for them. I, I think it was probably a bigger audience, but not that big. I didn't think they were done with love and care yes, of the original. I, I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree with, with that, that perspective. I think that, you know, last year, I spent a little bit more time with the first one. And I kind of started to realize, like, well, you know, I'd always this, I'd already always decided that it was bad no matter what and i played about through about halfway through the game and i said you know it's it's not as bad as i as i thought there there is a lot of cheapness and the like it looks very cheap in the way that the characters move yeah and you know like the artwork looks very cheap um it's more of a modern anime look i mean i'm a, like i'm a big fan of that that kind of 80s anime look and 80s and like early 90s right anime look and that stuff has all been lost in that yeah, uh, that, the that, music does not fit at all. It's too festive and yeah, yeah. I know that the big thing that that turned me off was when I saw the character designs. I was like, this is disgusting. I hate it. I <laughs> because Fancy Star One, as you said, had this beautiful '80s style that is lost in time. You'll never see it again. Right. It's just such a what I like about it. It's so hand done. It's so amateurish in a way that yes. it has a yeah yeah that it has a charm to it. Where this stuff was so horribly stylized and i i hate how meow looked and alice looked i was like no yeah i mean i i there's there's a pretty good fan translation out for it yes uh which i mean if you get a chance to revisit it and you have a way to play burn burn games yeah try out the, the fan translation um <clears throat> what it's it's kind of nice is that the characters kind of interact with each other a lot more so it kind of takes those more modern you know dialogue heavy instances and applies it to it which is kind of nice but yeah i mean there's i mean the, the same can be said for almost all of those uh yeah. sega ages 2500 you know all those remakes were very cheaply done and i don't think that they put the the time and effort i mean they they farmed them out to like other other developers. oh studios. you can see that <laughs> but uh the, the the second the generation two uh includes the Includes a playable version of the of the second of the Genesis version on it. Yes, but it is. Uh, I think they made some improvements to, to Generation Two. Yeah, I think that you you can apparently in that version. I although you know I could be wrong. Is you you can revive Nay in that version. Yes, I remember hearing that, and it's just it wasn't a selling point to me. Again, the cheap aesthetic graphics of it all yes. were just there was no love. And here's the thing, and I'm going to say something that I think makes sense. And it's not like me and you are such huge Fantasy Star fans, along with Joe from GameStack. If the three of us got together working with the Japanese team, we're like, no, this <laughs> is how you do it. I yeah. I think we could create, yeah, I, I, th I would have loved to be in charge of doing the remake of Fantasy Star 1. I I would have gone it right, and especially because I'm an artist, I could have drawn it all. I could have said, no, we need <laughs> this. Like, we need the backgrounds to look exactly like they did. But more modern, but hearkening back that, that same feeling. They, there was right. none of that love or magic that was missing, mm -hmm. and that's what I would be like trying to get. Yeah, yeah. And you know, people can revisit. You know, the original version. I think it's going to be out here pretty soon. It, yes. it will. It will be out by the time people watch that. Oh There's, yeah. It came out on the Switch. There will be. You know, the first one's getting re-released on the Switch with like the uh, with the map function and stuff like that. That which is. Great, and, and the thing is, I think if anybody goes to play it, they'll be like, "Oh, isn't this an old arcade type of type of game?" Know that it's a game changer, and it changed yes. everything for all yes. of us. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I honestly, I, mean, I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for Fantasy Star. Yeah, I mean, I, I could, I could understand that. I, I would say the the same thing is probably same for me. Yeah, you know, I, it's I, I. It changed the way that I perceived games and the experiences I could have with them. Absolutely. 
And I think that's probably, is there anything more you want to say about Fantasy Star? Because we've been going for like an hour plus. It's all right. Well, I think that if, if people are looking to revisit it, you know, if you have a, the, the ability to play uh, uh, Japanese PlayStation 2 games, um, this is not the remake, but this is the uh, the Fantasy Star Complete Collection, which came out on the 20th anniversary. Yeah, I'm holding up mine uh, too. Yeah. And this is a, probably the best way to play the games these days, I think. They all, uh, they have, you can increase the speed that you walk. Um, you can, it has a adjustable difficulty level that you can uh, make it, it doesn't change the difficulty of the game. All it does is like, is give you uh, four times the money and four times the experience per battle. So it removes the whole grind. Wow. And uh, it includes the, uh, the Japanese and American versions on that. Now, that was something that you told me last week. I was like, what? I didn't know the English versions were in here. That's a good collection. Yes. I mean, it's by uh, the Japanese developer M2. Yeah. That does, like, a lot of... They, they just did the uh, the versions coming out on the Switch as well. Um, but they, they handled a lot of the, the late... Uh, the late uh, compilations for that, that series. They did the uh, the 3D games on the... The Sega 3D classics on the, the 3DS as well. Wow. Yeah, that, that's amazing to hear, and it's just... Isn't it so weird that it's all these years later we're getting Banksy Star on the Nintendo Switch, and it's like, oh my god, like, they still remember? Like... Yeah. Like, I, I'm always hoping to hear something more about Fantasy Star that isn't Fantasy Star Online, because that's mm -hmm. where the entire series is nowadays. It's gone completely online, and even online version 2, like, you know, the online 2 game, yeah. we, we don't have here. The... There was a promise to maybe a potential that we were getting it, and we never did. But even those games aren't quite fancy stars. They have just aesthetics and little pieces and things here and there, but yes. it doesn't feel like the original. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. The, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that you probably spent a lot of time with Fancy Star Online. Oh, the first one, a the very Dreamcast small one. amount. You know, the one that's free to play. Yeah, a small amount, maybe only about 750 hours. <laughs> Yeah. Not much. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I think that that has my most, my like the highest time counter of any game I've ever, ever played. Uh, it came out when I had just gone away to college, and you know I, I had a broadband adapter. I was playing in my dorm room. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I, you know, it's terrible. I've never. I don't think I've ever said this story. Is that I remember I was playing Fancy Star Online so much that this is horrible. I'm a family member had fallen very ill like something terrible mm -hmm. had happened to them and they were trying to phone me and they couldn't get through because the goddamn phone line was tied up because i was playing fancy star all day and it was like really bad i i should have known about this the second it happened but it was days later i, I can laugh oh, about it now the, the person ended up being completely okay uh but uh it was a really bad situation like my family was very angry at me like what the what a horrible thing to say, but I didn't know because they, they couldn't get through it. This is before cell phones. This is before my fancy star phone. <laughs> Way before that, but you know, like I just want to say, like, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing some of your memories, uh, talking about this great series. And I'm just gonna say to everybody down below, if you haven't done it, definitely subscribe to My Life in Gaming. Check out all their videos. They're unbelievable. I, your videos are like, you know, yours and try videos are unreal they're incredible watches i know they take so much time to do but thank you for so much for doing them i totally well, appreciate it i know are we saying that is there gonna be a fancy star episode sometime oh yeah yeah um and you know i kind of just touched on a little bit of what i'd be covering in that um recently we, we started doing a series that we call like the best way to play where we kind of look look at all the different uh ports of different games and i will be working like probably i I don't know if it's going to be out by the time people watch this, but maybe it will be. Yeah. Uh, one on the, the the best way to play the original Fantasy Star series. Oh, wow. It's just, you know, the kind of, all the different, like the, like the remakes and, you know, all the different ports of the original. That would be the original amazing. four. Hey, hey, wait. You know you know the best way to play them is? Emulate. Uh, emulation. When they came out. I'm, I'm kidding. Because I know that's your pet peeve when people say that to you. Oh, when they say what? When you say that you can just emulate them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, I mean it's it's true. Even though you know the the M2 collection is technically emulation, it's you know there's uh 
that's that's kind of a joke for people. You know, I I, I joked a long time ago because we, we we focus on a lot on uh, like playing games on real hardware and getting it to look good on your HDTV using the original hardware and just you know the other options. You know, like but we mainly cover you know official options like official emulation, yeah. official ports, and uh, you know a lot of time I was, I joked a long time ago and said you know I think there's people that, that are subscribed subscribe to our channel just so as soon as a new video goes up they can say oh or or, or you could just emulate it <laughs> you, know, you know you know what i think i'll be the first person in your, your next video to say that number one <laughs> on all that it's true i mean not 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 poo-pooing like that that approach i mean yeah. we we take the approach that whatever you know whatever works for everybody or whatever works for you yourself no and, and but, it, it's really fantastic to learn about all the other ways uh to play it the best you can. I, I find it fascinating. Like I watched your symphony of the night one and I was like, oh my God, this is mind blowing. And it's like, it's crazy. All the different ways you can experience the game. It's so funny back yeah. in, back in the day, the day we just hook up our AV cables or RF cables. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of other things that, that are possible to think about, but you, you can just hook up AV cables if you want, or an HDMI cable. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's, you know there's, there's many, many options. And that's what's so great about your guys' show is uh, showing all those different options and all of that. And I just want to say thank you once again for coming in today to talk about. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. To talk about the incredible Fantasy Star series. And I want to thank everybody for watching this. I know it was a long one, but we had a lot of fun and we really wanted to put this together for New Year's Day. So anyways, guys, until next time.